Uh, well, first off, thank you, uh, Carsley's, for opening up the edge. Uh, it's always an amazing time going there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Freezing cold laser tag. That's that's a trip. Uh, also, thank you, Pastor, for letting us go. Um, Pastor Sumter was definitely a huge blessing. Um, that was that was a very uh, huge encouragement. So thank you. Um, well, would y'all go to Acts sixteen? Acts sixteen. Uh, I will begin reading in verse 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of the same hour. And when her master saw that she hope of their gains was gone, they called it Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and kept trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour, and he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrates, uh, the magistrates sent the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told his told this, saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privily? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them, and departed. So, this whole passage can be summed up by another verse I'll read. It is Philippians 4-7. It says, uh, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Everything that had just happened to Paul was, we would say, just crazy. Um, but it was, it was a peace of God that just completely came over Paul and Silas uh, that got him through all of that. Um, so I know we have heard uh, this passage from Acts before, and um, the same verse, too. It's, it can be applied to a lot of areas. Um, but even though the message of both uh, Acts 16 and Philippians 4-7 is uh, clear and simple, Sometimes I wonder if I've ever experienced this, this peace and joy that uh, Paul and Silas were experiencing. Um, I know this promise is given to all Christians, and it is a very open-ended promise. But uh, sometimes I feel just unsure on uh, how could I ever find peace or joy like this. Um, I'm sure that some of us struggle with most of the same things, um, but... That's why I'm giving this devotion, is so that we can we can find a way to have peace and joy. Um, so uh, I will have to be a little bit honest here. I was not completely prepared for this, um, so I'm like very nervous right now. Um, 
but uh, yeah, thank you. Um, but uh, I got a I got a really good time this afternoon just to be completely by myself for about an hour or something. Um, and uh, I was everyone else was asleep, so it was completely quiet. And uh, I just got some good time to uh, just pray with the Lord. I was completely unsure what to talk about. I had no idea. Um, and I was, I was praying that the Lord would just um, show me an area of my life that I struggle and um, help me to, to preach on that. Um, and I'm very thankful that God answers prayers immediately because literally as I was thinking, like as I was praying, I thought, I was like, oh yeah, Philippians 4, 7. I was like, that's a good verse. Um, so of course I forgot the passage, so I just looked up. I was like, oh yeah, that's what it is. Um, but anyways, um, uh, yeah, so I, I looked up Philippians 4, 7, and um, I had prayed that God would give me an understanding of um, what I would read. And as I was reading that, um, I was I looked through like um, one of my uh, my Bible books because um, we were talking about uh, something recently like this. So I went to Acts 16, and uh, he gave me a complete understanding and a, kind of a reference point to this verse. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, as I'm saying, I really understand why you want that mirror, because I feel like this whole message is to myself right now. So I understand that now. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> um, anyways, so in Philippi, uh, Paul cast out this evil spirit of this woman who uh, she was basically, she was, uh, like I said, she was in uh, Sioux Sang, and um, he did this miraculous work in Philippi. So the Roman soldiers had the bright idea to pay Paul. So they're like, well, what's the greatest gift we can give Paul? Um, so they beat him with a rod and threw him in prison. Um, then, uh, yeah, so they beat him with rods, threw him in jail. But uh, even, in still, even still in jail with wounds that were still bleeding and most likely getting infected, um, Paul and Silas prayed and sang hymns. Um, I don't know about any of y'all, but I'd be a little salty at that point if I had just done this awesome work for uh, this lady and for this town, and what I get paid with is a uh, beating and throwing in jail. Um, but that is not how Paul and Silas responded. Um, sometimes my inspiration to, uh, to offer praise it dwindles significantly, even if little things go wrong in my life. Yeah. Um, I just get so used to doing things my way, everything going my way, that it's like one little thing that doesn't go my way, and so I get upset. And I throw some kind of temper tantrum. I say it's stupid. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Um, I'll throw fits. We get so used to just having everything our way that when one little thing goes wrong, we just start throwing ourselves around, throwing a fit like a two-year-old. Um, Paul and Silas could have easily done this, um, but they, they didn't at all because they just had a complete peace of God. Um, yeah. Um, back on track, sorry. Um, yeah, petty things, petty things. It's human nature, just petty things we get into. Um, but uh, compared to Paul and Silas, um, I wonder if what what am I doing wrong, or am I not praying enough, or am I missing something? Um, sometimes you just don't know. But um, that's why we read the verses before. So let's read Philippians 4, 1 through 9. 1 through 7. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Iodius and beseech Syntyche, that they may be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help these women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the main verse I want to look at is verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Um, when, if, you, if you look at that verse, uh, verse 4, out of context, then it does little to uh, reveal the whole, the whole message God is presenting. Um, but we are called to constantly rejoice in the Lord. Um, that's, that's kind of one of the problems I was facing. Um, rather than praising God for the endless stream of mercy sent my way, uh, you kind of treat God like a wishing well who would make your life better if you asked enough. You know, just keep praying like, hey, God, can you, can you give me this? Can you make my life just a little bit better? Just give me a little bit more of that. That's not, it's not, what, it's not who God is. It's not what he's there for. Um, as, we, as we learn from Paul and Silas, uh, the, the peace God provides does not come from a life of luxury and ease, but uh, God's peace comes despite the terrible things the world does to those who are saved. Um, Paul and Silas were unjustly beaten and thrown in jail, but their hearts and minds were at peace as they uh, solely focused on God's grace. That was, they had nothing else on their mind but the grace of God, even though they were, they had every right to be upset. They didn't think about that. Um, from a worldly perspective, that doesn't make sense at all. You know, you got, you got every right to be bitter. You got just like this big gold star on your chest that says, hey, I earned my bitterness. And the world's like, oh yeah, that's true. You can be bitter. You have a reason. That's okay. And they just don't even think about it. Um, but God provided peace and joy when by all means, there should never have been any peace and joy in their hearts. Um, like I said, from the world's eyes, you earned your bitterness. Um, uh, if you're uh, number one priority is serving God, which Paul and Silas is absolutely was, um, then everything else stops holding leverage on your mind. Uh, like all, all the bad things, that just completely goes away. You forget about all of it. Um, this is the lesson that Paul and Silas were uh, used to teach, and it's a lesson that we should install into our hearts. Um, but somehow, still kind of find myself wondering, how can I be like the Apostle Paul? Um, so, uh, yeah, how can I fix myself to God's will so passionately that I, am only, that I only care about pleasing him? Um, as always, when a question is asked, we should look to the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. So let's look at Luke 9, 23. says, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So this is a very hard uh, pill to swallow for, for every sinner. Um, but you cannot grow spiritually until you completely understand uh, this reality. Um, the Holy Spirit knows if you aren't solely focused on God. Um, just like Peter trying to walk on water. He wasn't, he wasn't completely devoted, to, he wasn't completely focused on God. Um, he let his attention slip for just like half of a second and it instantly started sinking. Um, but by praising God, uh, we acknowledge God's mercy in our life instead of looking at all the evil around us. Um, that is, you know, easy thing to say, hard to do kind of thing. Um, but uh, like the Apostle Paul and Silas, uh, we cannot focus on the thoughts of our life and all the beatings in the jail cell. You can't, you can't just look at everything bad that's going on in your life. That will, you're going to talk about stay, getting stuck in a rut. Just look at everything bad, everything bad around you. Just focus on that. You want to stay in the dumps? Look at all that. But if you want to get out of it, then you keep your high thoughts. Um, I think you were talking about that. Uh, every high thought. You start focusing on every good thought. And that rut suddenly doesn't seem so bad. You can get out of that. It does get better. Um, so whenever whenever despair kind of just like grabs you by the throat, you can't you feel like you cannot escape, then uh, just just list 
every blessing you have. Just list every every good thing that you have. Don't focus on anything bad. Um, and then thank God for every single one of those things. Um, so this this takes the focus off of all of your wants, all of your weakness, um, all of your pride, and it, it places it on God's shoulders. Um, for this reason, I must praise God daily uh, because without his strength, I cannot go on. No matter how hard I try, no matter what I try to just say, I'm good, I can push through, I got it, it's fine, I got it. I never have it. It's only through God's strength that we can get it. Um, Paul and Silas knew this truth and they acted upon it. Um, This example is one that no matter what age you're in, although it's, it can definitely be applied to teens because 15 is really hard. Um, but uh, 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 y'all stop. Um, so, you know, no matter, what, no matter what you think is bad in your life, no matter how hard you think it is, there's always a piece of God that can just overwhelm you more than you could ever imagine. It's like take, take that, that little bad thing and just like multiply it by like, Four million, and that's all the good that God can give you—the the peace and the joy. Um, so, like I said, let's uh, let's continue to follow their example. Um, just praise God in in all things, um, and God will provide the the same peace that He gave Paul and Silas. He will He will give that to you. Amen. Uh, Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, just thank you for this opportunity just to um, share what uh, what I'm struggling with, Lord. I uh, struggle with it a lot, and I just thank you for um, you just uh, giving us this great peace um, that can just completely overtake everything bad that goes on with our lives, Lord. I just pray that uh, no matter what circumstance we're in, Lord, we can always just uh, keep tunnel vision on you. I just pray that you just be our main focus. I just pray that you just um, give us a peace and joy in that, Lord. Pray those things in your name.